Hey guys, Hayden here from Alarm System Store again, and today I'm actually going over the Alarm.com um, video settings. So each camera has its own settings, but there is a general settings layout. So I'm going to be running through all that, kind of show you guys where everything's at. Um, to preface this video, I recorded this at the same time that I finished up our B724 Part 2 video. So you'll hear me reference that a few times, but basically, a lot of these settings are going to be universal to all alarm.com cameras. Uh, there will be some things like um, a two-way audio and onboard recording that are specific to certain cameras. So you won't see those options if your camera does not support it. But just wanted to put this video out there for you guys so that you guys get a general idea uh, where to locate settings and what all you can change, things like that. So anyway, I will leave you guys to it. So the last thing I want to show you guys are the actual cameras, just general settings. And you can change these for any camera. Uh, basically, you'll go to the top here, you'll click settings in the black area again. And over here on the left side, you can choose between different cameras. So if you have multiple cameras, you'll have a list here. You can select what you want to change. Um, so since we only have the one, we'll be on cam one. And then uh, right here, uh, basically, this is just these settings right here. So uh, you can either select it from this section or you can come over here and read exactly which one is going to change what. But I'm basically just going to run through um, and give a short rundown of what all of these sections do. So very first one is video device info. So when you get here, what it's going to show is your video device name. It's going to show the model of the camera. It's going to show the MAC address, the IP address, uh, both private and public. It's going to show the different ports that the camera is using. It shows the firmware version, shows DDNS update time. So that's basically the last time um, your connection updated for the camera and then normalized wireless signal strength. It will show you how well your camera is connected to Wi-Fi. Um, so uh, you can refresh that value right now. It's not going to show me anything because it's not connected, but um, anyway, the next section, the next selection is turn off the camera's microphone and speaker. So uh, the V724 has two way audio. Uh, which means it has a microphone and a speaker in it. So if you wanted to turn those off for any reason, you can do so here. And right below that is the call volume. So this is going to determine how loud um, the sound you hear through the app is, basically how sensitive the speaker is in And it also shows normalized wireless signal strength um, if available. Uh, it gives an option to turn off the camera's microphone and speaker so you can completely deactivate the two-way audio if you wish. Uh, the call volume, this determines how loud the, the speaker is on the camera. So uh, if you're speaking through it, often you might want to have this all the way up so that whoever is outside can hear it properly. Um, if you don't really care, uh, you can turn it down, set it wherever you need to. This is kind of trial and error as well. Um, and then you can also turn off the device's LED light, and then you can also turn off the infrared LED, uh, which basically affects whether or not your camera is going to pick up video in the dark. Now, if you need to, there are some advanced network setup and testing options that you can go into. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Uh, that's a little bit outside. Um, the point of this video so we're just going to move on to the next section so second one is live video you can come here to change the resolution of the camera so the highest resolution that the v724 records in is 1080p so if you set that for uh, highest it is always going to record in 1080p and it's going to adjust the resolution to be more clear so but you do lose um, motion capture ability by going for clarity. There's a standard option, which is a balance between motion and clarity, and then there's a reduced resolution, which is optimized for motion. Um, so set that how you wish. And then the second one, or the next option on this page is live video connection. So 
this allows um, So this live video connection, basically if you're on the same network that your camera is, this can speed up the amount of time that it takes to load up your camera. Um, but what it does do, if it's checked on, it will slow down remote operations. So if you're at work and you need to check your camera, um, it's going to take longer to load that live video feed. So that one's kind of uh, dependent on the person. You can change that if need be. Um, so if you want, if you're going to be looking at your cameras remotely more often, uh, I would leave this option off. But if you're going to be uh, at the location more often than not, leave it on. That way it speeds up your live connection time. And make sure all these settings that you're changing, if you do change them, make sure you save and it will actually set them on the camera. And then the next section is video device image. So this is brightness, contrast, saturation. Um, basically, uh, if I had a video feed right now, it actually would give me a box um, and show what the camera sees. And you can adjust you know, all these settings so that the camera uh, looks exactly how you wish. Um, it's got... Uh, Along with your normal just video settings, it also has night vision sensitivity. Uh, you can flip the image, which would uh, basically do a 180 uh, vertical. So everything would be upside down. Um, so if your camera is fixed to the ceiling instead of like a wall pointing uh, facing the normal way, you can use this to flip that image if need be. So you can change match, max exposure, which is uh, how bright your image is going to be during nighttime capture, so infrared capture. Um, it won't let me change it, but there's a couple different options in there. You can set it how you wish. Just make sure that you test these settings so that it's going to work the way you want. Um, and then you can also turn on and off the high definition, high dynamic range. Um, and all that does is it's more of a, a light and color enhancement than anything. So if you have dark areas on the camera itself, turning this on can brighten up those dark areas to help give better visuals. Um, if it's off, if it sees dark shadowy spots, they will look like dark shadowy spots. And like I said, the box did appear um, while I was in here recording. So normally this would have an image of your screen. And as you adjust these, if you give it a minute, it will actually show you the difference um, on the screen itself. So um, let's go to the next section. So the next section is saved video. And this is going to be settings for the clips that the camera is going to take. So the first option here is automatically share videos from this camera. Now, while installing the device, um, you will be asked about this. Uh, basically, Alarm.com will take any shared video clips and they use that for troubleshooting purposes. They use it for quality purposes. It's similar to websites asking for cookies to improve the user experience. So you can decide whether or not you want to donate your clips to Alarm.com. But uh, anyway, set that however you wish. And then the next section is going to talk about the actual recorded clip um, resolution, image quality, frame rate, and number of days that it's supposed to keep clips. You can change the resolution from low to high. Uh, basically, it's uh, 640 by 360, 1280 by 720, and 1920 by 1080. So set that as you wish. Um, you can set the image quality. Uh, when you click on this, it will show you uh, highest, largest recorded clips, standard is default, and reduced is smallest recorded clips. So basically that changes the size of your clips. Um, and now down here, uh, I believe it will actually change this timer here. I, I'll re-update this when I redo this video, um, but basically it will change the amount of clip length uh, dependent on these settings up here. But basically just decide how... Um, you want this camera's quality to look whenever it's recording clips. And you can also limit the number of days that it keeps these clips. Typically, you can just leave it to unlimited and it will just overwrite as it needs to. Um, now, you can also change the clip format. 
from standard MP4. You can do mobile video file. Um, this helps if you're always on mobile. And the only time you ever use it is um, with your app. Uh, basically allows these clips to be formatted to run on a phone or tablet, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, there's also Windows files and Mac files. So if you have these clips sent to a computer um, you can choose whether it's a windows computer or a mac and that will optimize the recording clip for that computer type or for that uh, clip format um, and then the next one is request clip uploads for how many minutes during an alarm so basically if you have an alarm uh, all cameras by default are set to trigger so you can change how long this camera is going to record in the event of an alarm so you can do one minute two minutes five minutes ten minutes and 15 minutes so set that as you wish uh, basically if your alarm system goes off it's going to start recording for that amount of time now this setting right here this timer is for camera triggered clip lengths so if the camera is triggered this is how long it will record for you can change it from 20 to 30 seconds to 40 to 60 seconds anything beyond that um, it will not record because these cameras are cloud-based so uh, basically those are your two options and then the event triggered clip length again this one is going to be dependent on these settings up here uh, when your camera is actually connected unlike mine it will adjust this as you change these settings so normally if i change this to high it would take away about 20 seconds or so on the clip this last setting right here is very important this is the pre-trigger recording so let's say uh, somebody triggers your camera and they're there for all of about 30 seconds, but you wanted to see like where they came from, what they were doing prior to. This pre-trigger recording, if enabled, it will start recording or start the clip a few seconds before the actual trigger was received. So basically you'll get prior footage to the trigger so you can see what triggered it and then everything past that. Now, because of the event, triggered clip length and the camera triggered clip length. This will take away some of the time towards the end of the actual recording. Um, so you may want that or not. Um, you can decide. But basically, uh, it's either going to give you about 10 seconds before the recording um, or 10 seconds at the end of the recording. Um, make sure you save that when you're done. And then the last one is uh, that I'm going to cover is the video analytics calibration. So what I did earlier where I was taking multiple pictures um, backing away from the camera, if you need to calibrate your camera again, if your video analytics don't seem to be working properly, you can come here, click on that, and it's actually uh, going to start the calibration process all over again. So you can retake those pictures and make sure the camera is working as it should. And you can change your wireless networks for your cameras from this section. So if you got a different router, uh, you can come in here. Um, as long as your camera is still connected to wireless at the time, you can do it from the computer portal. Um, this is really helpful if you get uh, like alarm.com smart gateway for their cameras. Uh, they actually have a Wi-Fi device that is specifically designed to optimize camera networks. So if you connect your cameras to that, you will get the best possible Wi-Fi connection to that camera that you can. Um, so if you plug that in and get the smart gateway connected to your internet, you can come here and move the camera from your home internet over to that alarm.com gateway. Now this option right here, this stream video to security panel screen, this is tied to very specific alarm systems, uh, mainly the IQ Panel 2 Plus and the IQ Panel 4. Uh, if you choose to stream your video to the camera, uh, basically what it allows you to do is choose whether your camera will actually show up on your IQ screen. So, if you want to be able to operate your cameras from your IQ panel, um, you can come in here, select this checkbox, and if you have multiple cameras, it will show them. I don't know of any limit on this. Um, I've seen up to 16 cameras on an IQ panel, uh, but there may be a hard limit. It doesn't mention it here, so if there is one, I am unaware of it. 
but basically select all the cameras that you wish your IQ panel to display. Um, I'm actually going to start doing more videos on the IQ panel 4, um, or well the IQ panel period, I have an IQ 2 plus, so um, I'll be doing some videos on those to kind of give you guys an idea of how well it integrates, especially with cameras and like doorbell cameras and things like that. Um, but we'll get into that at a later time. But this is where you would select what cameras you want to view on your IQ panel. So make sure the check mark is in the box and then click save if you want that setting. And those last two sections, um, one's for SD card information. That one doesn't have any options to change, so I'm not going to go into it. Um, you can reformat your SD card from that section, but that is the only option available there. Otherwise, it just gives information. Um, but that would be for onboard recording, so if you have onboard recording, by all means, jump in there, check it out, see what it shows you. Um, and the, then the last option is for um, adding a new video device. So if you have additional cameras to add, you can do it from that. Or if you go to your devices tab on your phone, you can add it there. Um, basically the same process. But anyway, that is where I'm going to end this video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this one didn't cover anything real specific. It was kind of just a general information video so that you guys know where to find um, settings for your cameras. Um, so hopefully you learned something new and if there's anything in particular in regards to like alarm.com or maybe their video cameras that you guys want to see and by all means let me know and i will try to make it happen um, otherwise uh, i'm gonna hop off here and i will catch you guys on the next one